The dangerous rise of anti-intellectualism. To start, I had hoped to work in this quote from Isaac Asimov. There yeah. is a cult of ignorance in the United States, and there has always been. The strain of anti-intellectualism has been a constant thread, winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. Well, it's technically true. He's right about that. Yeah, because if you vote and you're smart and somebody else votes and they're dumb and you vote the opposite, it's like y'all never voted at all. This quote is from yep. 1980, and it's been echoed by other great mm -hmm. thinkers like Carl Sagan, who spoke about the public being unable yeah. to grasp the technology we all use every day and having no ability to set their own agenda or ask the right questions, culminating in a celebration of ignorance. Yep. He said that in 1995. Imagine how bad Even it is Even these now. two could not have foreseen yeah. how bad this has gotten in the 21st yep. century, with people now questioning the shape of the earth and the validity of basic arithmetic. This anti-science fervor makes us easy to manipulate because any contrarian message is bought en masse, no matter who is- This, what, what really did damage to this a lot was COVID, I'll tell you that. COVID fucked this up big because the COVID science was not final, right? But people wanted you to accept it as if it was. So any questioning of the science, any questioning of anything about COVID, like any degree of like- authority that people thought science had i think really got fucked up by covid telling it or what their motives it like really are. broke people's are brains it broke a, a lot of anti-science empire operating through mass media and legislation moving towards state-sanctioned pseudoscience oh absolutely and we don't have to speculate as to how harmful this can be mm -hmm. we have history to reflect upon persecution of oh, scientists under stalin was widespread Lysenko was a non-scientist who was promoted to a high scientific mm -hmm. position under Stalin's regime and who convinced Stalin that genetics and relativity were evil. He denied the existence of genes. To address agricultural problems, he promoted a pseudoscientific practice called vernalization and millions died of starvation as a result of crop failures. Sci it's got what plants crave. Scientists who refused to renounce genetics were left destitute or even executed. Yep. Are we at risk of repeating such events? Absolutely. Let's mm -hmm. face reality. Trump is going to win the election. Could he bring a Lysenko-like figure into his cabinet and begin persecuting real scientists? Absolutely. Will he try to expand executive power and abuse his position to the point of authoritarianism? Probably. Probably. Yep. And there are plenty of wealthy people who will help him try to do that. I won't go into detail about Project 2025, but it's not a conspiracy. It's a real plan to move America into the first stages of Christian theocracy, and it's already underway. This is the evil upon our doorstep. And while it should receive far more attention than people like Terrence Howard, we should recognize that it's all different shades of the same phenomenon. Anti-science sentiment does not arise out of thin air. Science is becoming increasingly more complicated and therefore difficult for the public to understand. And some people lash It's at also that science is like much wider than it used to be. Like people understand, like there's so much stuff that's in the world now, right? You have to deal with like technology, it's like computers, like cars, all of this stuff. Like, people had much deeper knowledge in a handful of subjects back when, like, obviously, like, those were the only subjects. Like, a lot more people knew about the emperors in Rome in, like, 1920 than they're learning about now. Because there's just so much more going on. Sedition and Trump. No, the thing is, like, you talk about the Trump thing, like, that. that's just the side. It's not the point, right? It's not the point out due to the discomfort this produces but more yeah. importantly there are vested interests in promoting this mentality mm -hmm. stemming from republican funded think tanks the deliberate sculpting of a populace that is not only science illiterate but actively hostile towards science Denial of climate change is in the interest of energy producers. Denial of basic evolutionary biology is in the interest of Christian theocrats. It is. These efforts go all the way up the ladder These to guys. figures like the Koch brothers. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Terry's funded by the Koch brothers, but he rides this prevalent attitude of reality denial and hostility toward any form of expertise. To this I don't think that's true. Uh, I personally don't think that the reason why this happens is because of Republicans. I think it happens because what like how things have evolved really is that nowadays people are so overly invested in their own opinions on things that 
you just keep talking and keep you stay in the echo chamber of the people that agree with you and you just get more and more extreme. I think that's what happens. Copium? Well, no, I'll give you an example, right? So, like, there are a lot of people that say that, like, I, I think that the transsexual women competing against, like, biological women is a good example of, like, anti-science stuff for, like, Democrats as well. I think that's a very good example of it. And I think what's happened is that there is a lot of anti-science rhetoric that's used by everybody on all different sides of the, uh, of, like, politics and, like, social politics and everything. And the problem is that if you step outside of the box that you're supposed to be in, you have everybody instantly fucking hate you. So what happens is that people are afraid of stepping outside of that box because they don't want to deal with the harassment and the criticism and the hate from people for saying the wrong thing. So what happens is that it creates a feedback loop in society where there's a chilling effect of having any opinion that's outside of the dogma that you subscribe to. So, for example, like Kyle Rittenhouse was critical of Trump and, you know, like Trump being against the Second Amendment or something like that. And everybody immediately decided they fucking hated him. Right. Because instead of even thinking about it or having a conversation, they think to themselves instantaneously, oh, this person is a little bit different than us. Now let's go ahead. Now they're our enemy. And so a lot of people don't want to have that happen to them. So what's happened is that the and I think this has happened because of the, the, the decline in religion. I think that human beings have a primal and personal desire to outsource their critical thinking to another person and to another entity, because I don't think I think people are uncomfortable with the ability that they can critically think and they don't like it. So what they do is they look for somebody else to critically think for them. So this used to be religion. Now, instead, it's uh, political dogma or social dogma or still, in a lot of cases, religion. So people can outsource their, their critical thought and they don't have to worry about questions like what happens when you die? Why do bad people get good things? Uh, these questions that seem to be unfair and they like it, it like fucks your head because like why are why are bad things this way? Having something that solves all that problem for you is very appealing, especially for people that don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about it and getting invested into it. Yes, ignorance is bliss, but unironically. So what's happened is that people have gone from being focused on caring about facts to being focused around caring about what the opinions of everybody else around them are because they're worried about being ostracized. So, for example, like me saying that um, I'm very much pro climate change, right? Like, not pro, I want the climate to change, but I very much believe in climate change. I think climate change is a legitimate, real problem that we should be considering. How much do humans affect it? I don't know, but I think it's something that's worth considering, especially with pollution and stuff like that. Uh, and, and so, yes, yes, I, I agree with that. But I also agree that, yeah, I mean, like, you shouldn't have trans women competing against biological women in sports. And the problem is that there are two sides of this political dogma that have been created, and I've effectively just ostracized myself from both sides. And that's why you see people that try to give critical analysis oftentimes stop doing it. I don't know what you guys, if you guys have heard of the term audience capture before, but audience capture is when you create an audience of people that you then become afraid to challenge because those people are now what determines uh, your content. So what happens for a lot of people is that they step outside their box once or twice, and then they get absolutely fucking shit on for it. And then after that, they stay inside their box and they never leave it and they never question and they never challenge their audience again. And I think this is true. It, it, it's true with high visibility with content creators, but it's also true with lower visibility for individuals. Because it's like, I'm just not going to talk politics anymore. I'm not going to express myself anymore towards, like, for example, like my mom. My mom used to be very, very, like, conspiracy theory minded. And my dad and her used to have conversations about politics. And my dad was like, okay, I don't want to deal with this because she was just so vitriolic about it. She would get so mad about it. And I don't know if you guys have had a person like that in your life that you can't have you can't have critical conversations with them because there's like you're like walking on a minefield right where it's like if you say this thing this person will have like this crazy reaction yeah everybody has that so what effect does that have that goes back to the chilling effect that i was talking about and about how that chilling effect causes people that have nuanced reasoned and uh you know like critical opinions to self-censor 
Like, I'm, I will not speak. I don't want to deal with it, right? I don't want to have to deal with it. And I think that's what's happened, is that the anti-intellectualism, I think, is also a big, like, the, the rise in this is, like, one-to-one -one with religion. And then I think religion is one-to-one -one with extreme political dogma. I don't think that there's any real big difference there in terms of the way that people think about it. So I think that's the reason why. And that's why kids, by the way, are dumber now. It's because if you critically think, you get in trouble. If you critically ask questions and then you go outside of that box that they put you in, now you're the enemy. You see what I'm saying? So people are taught systematically not to critically think by our culture. It's making kids dumber and it's making the smart people silent. That's untrue. What? No, I, I think that is true. I think it's absolutely true. Anti-intellectualism has happened many times in the past when religion, even when religion was dominant. Yes, I know that. That's the point. All I'm saying is that we've replaced religion with dogma that's different, but it's fundamentally the same. It's bizarre prominence that now has people questioning second grade math. To wield an agenda that is in opposition with science, one must popularize the notion that science is wrong and evil. Universities, the places where Which you COVID made it easier for people to think this. COVID like 5x or 10x this. Because people didn't trust the government and the government said you have to trust us. To gain knowledge are evil. Don't go there and learn yeah. things so that you can figure out how to resist our brainwashing mm -hmm. and also how to organize and topple our political structures. I you agree with him, by the way, that schools, this is a conspiracy Andy opinion, by the way, complete conspiracy Andy. I think that schools intentionally miseducate people. I think that people are intentionally miseducated. And I think the, uh, the decision to teach algebra two instead of statistics one is intentional. Universities are famously places that stand up against the powers that be, so they must be demonized. Yep. It is a successful campaign because many people are happy to have a reason mm -hmm. to not learn anything exactly. and cling to primitive beliefs without basis or self-scrutiny. It goes without saying that religion is a primary driver of anti-science mentality it's not the only one, though. because scientific progress, particularly as of late, has challenged many religious narratives. Such as This happened a lot. Obviously, Galileo is a really good example about this. And, uh, you know, people do say, and the church, I mean, the Catholic church apologized for Galileo, like what, like a few years ago, really, like 10, 20 years ago, something like that. And so, yeah, Copernicus, uh, I, well, I mean, Galileo is the one as far as, sorry, I, I uh, this is a long time ago. I, I was in school quite a while. Galileo was one that discovered that the earth was, that like we are in a heliocentric, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like planet, right? That like the earth revolves around the sun. Yes, right. He did. And so why is it that they tried to shut that down? Because what it did is it made the Earth no longer the prime focus of the world that we existed in. And because the Earth was no longer the prime focus, it damaged the credibility of an argument that God made the Earth and we are super special. You see what I'm saying? Accurate divine creation. This triggers fear of mortality as yep. their narrative is eroded and they mm -hmm. lash out in precisely the same way as one would defend themselves against physical violence with hostility and tribalism. Another good example of this is what's called a creation museum. If you guys don't know what this is, um, they are museums that try to reconcile scientists and uh, like dinosaurs with the earth being 6,000 years old as in the Bible. I want to go to one of those, by the way. I will go to one of those. I would love to do it. It would be amazing. At the same time, this is not purely a religious issue. It has at this point completely yes, permeated secular exactly. politics. I this myself am not right. a Democrat, and I no longer yep. vote Democrat out of total disillusionment with the party, as it does not have the best interests of the American people in mind. But the Republican they... Party is cartoonishly apocalyptic in comparison. Mm -hmm know nothing, proudly stupid, in denial of truly all science, actively pushing us back into the dark ages in terms of both... The Republican Party does a very bad job removing bad actors. And, and I think this is a problem that both of the parties have, but I think the Republican Party definitely has an issue, and the Democrats do too, but Republicans, like, for example, like, all vaccines cause autism. This should have never been supported by anybody. This is ridiculous. But that's what happens. Ignorance and authoritarian yeah. control by the church. In the wake of this, to pretend that idiots like Terry should be given a voice is preposterous. He is not the culprit. I disagree with that. 
I think that it's very important for Terrence Howard to have a voice because collectively we learned that he was wrong. I think that people's awareness and respect for science has gone up as a net positive because of Terrence Howard, even though he himself was not the reason for it. But he exacerbates larger trends already in place. He does not yeah. deserve a platform. He is not part of any legitimate conversation. And most of the figures with any kind of expertise that shoehorn their way into the conversation have ulterior motives as well. Maybe. And only serve to further confuse the public, mm -hmm. like Eric. So let's get down to brass tacks. What is anti-intellectualism at its core? It boils down to three principles. One, religious anti-rationalism, essentially emotions over facts. Two, populist... A.K.A. Twitter. Anti-elitism, or the rejection of intellectual mm -hmm. institutions. And three, instrumentalism, the belief that pursuit of knowledge only serves practical means, namely... Pro Which is, by the way, true for most people. And that's the issue is that for a lot of people, it is true. Like, nobody needs to know about, like, the periodic table if you're working and you're just, like, doing some random job, right? D definitely true, but it's problematic to, like, make this the norm. This movement intends to halt the acquisition of new knowledge mm -hmm. that would undermine groups with power and privilege. Misinformation that benefits those in power is perpetuated, and those who speak truth to that power are preemptively character assassinated. Yes. The educational and you see this happen now all the time. Anybody who questions like official narratives on things, I mean, before Twitter got bought by Elon Musk, they would get banned off of every platform. It was awful. And like this happens everywhere, by the way. This isn't something that happens like this isn't a Republicans are bad in doing this. Uh, it, Republicans did this a lot in like the mid 2000s with like, uh, you know, post 9-11 Helldivers 2 mentality. So it's like anybody who's against America or like America blowing up people in the Middle East is like a traitor. Uh, like, yeah, it happened then for sure. But um, now it's happening, obviously, with left wing people where it was like for the last five years or so. It's kind of stopped. Elon's literally doing the same thing. Yeah, I saw he banned that white guys for Kamala Harris thing, or maybe he didn't ban it, but it was banned, which was a bad decision. Yeah, they shouldn't have been banned. Here is not completely blameless, admittedly. Part of the disdain towards academia is fostered mm -hmm. by the increasingly high cost of education. But this is not in itself a justification for abandoning the sanctity of centers of knowledge. Yeah. Corporations do not have their financial interests challenged when the public cannot even identify the issues that they are harmed by, thus perpetuating Exactly. Their own yeah, people don't even know what the problem is. That's why, for example, um, like social issues, like, for example, like trans people or uh, like, let me think, like where the earth is flat or not, or uh, like, let me think of some more like really, really dumb issues that people care about, like being gay uh, or men and women. Like you're looking for like extreme, like uh, sexual stuff, abortion, right? There are things that are like in the grand scheme of the government. These are like very minor issues. But because they're accessible to everybody, these issues become the entire driving force over whether somebody is agreed with or not. It's because there isn't a barrier to entry for them. Like anybody can have an opinion on it and think they know what they're talking about. Whereas for balancing a budget or putting money in a certain area or investing into a certain type of like scientific research or, you know, drilling for oil or fracking or something like that, people don't understand that. It, it's it's too complex and so it's just completely ignored subjugation we can historically blame the fossil fuel industry the tobacco industry and so forth yeah like i would i would assume that most people cannot read a graph like if you showed people five different graphs they would probably get one of the interpretations wrong can historically blame the fossil fuel industry, the tobacco industry mm -hmm. and so forth but we do not extend this to scientific knowledge itself Politicians, corporations, and religious institutions stand to benefit the most from promoting anti-intellectualism. Yeah, they right. enact the politicization of nonpartisan issues, polarizing things like climate change so yeah. severely that simply acknowledging basic science gets one ostracized. Well, exactly. Right. He literally used the word that I used. Yeah, he's 100% right. Um, and, and I don't think that obviously like he's using a lot of like Republican examples. So I think that people are, might be getting defensive. But I think that the essence of what he's saying is definitely true. And it's also true in the case of every single issue has two sides to it. And like our like American politics 
And when you go off that side, you are immediately the enemy. This spills over into the social realm just as easily. Mm -hmm. Anti-intellectualism breeds nationalism or the same blind allegiance to a governing body that is actively sowing the seeds of division. This is the reason for equating Black Lives Matter or any other kind of social justice with fascism and the justification for this or any I, other kind I always, of social justice. I, I think this is a absolutely fucking terrible argument. Just because you call yourself Antifa doesn't mean that you're anti-fascist. Like, it doesn't mean also, like, just you, you can, you know, for example, like, every evil party in the world, right, whether it's like the Chinese Communist Party, the Nazi Party, think about every bad party. None of them had a party of the evil guys with twirly mustaches that wear cool hats. It's always like the party of people trying to save the world and work under God. So using somebody's name as an argument is not very good. I've never agreed with this at all. I think it's, it's a horrible argument that if you think about it for three seconds, you would realize, yeah, Democratic People's Republic. Yeah, I mean, you think about this. Doesn't this sound like a great name? I mean, wouldn't you want to support the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea? I mean, democracy is good. Having a, We have a republic. That sounds good. Democrat, yes, this is what we want. Finally, they're doing democracy. Finally, this is great. It would be a misleading. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just because somebody has a certain name doesn't mean that they should be absolved from the bad things that they do. The guy makes some good points, but he's using examples that are really showing that he's the person he's talking about. Um, I think in this circumstance, it's not a good argument. But overall, like, uh, you know, to me... I'm the kind of person that I very rarely agree with everything a person says. So if it's something I don't really agree with, it doesn't really turn me off because I just I just don't think I just don't think like that, right? Nazis were like that. Yeah. Um, one of the Nazi slogans that they had um, was "God is with us," or "God with us," or something like that. It's not like they think that they're the evil guys with fascism and the justification for this always involves inventing violent intent out of thin air. This in turn is used to justify a militarized police force under the guise of protection. And <laughs> lastly, anti-intellectualism promotes being skeptical towards perceived authority while demanding that people blindly follow demagogues who are amplified by social media. People who- I think it's very important to always question science. And I think that people worship the outcomes of science more than they should. And I think that what's really the thing that people should care about and respect is the scientific method. The outcomes of the scientific method are to be questioned, right? But the method itself is what the actual good discovery was. Fall into Pure this view. way yeah. of thinking will place an unreasonable level of skepticism on the body of knowledge produced by tens of thousands of scientists yeah. operating all over the world under every type of government and in both the public and private sector. Yeah, and this has been massively damaged by COVID. I really think that like the the amount of like scientific, uh, what's the word for it? Like certainty that people had with COVID. Like you have to stay six feet apart. And like the, the, the way that that was communicated to the public eroded so much trust. Like, I don't think, I think it will take over 10 years to recover from that, if not 20. It was awful. Yet they place absolutely zero scrutiny on the figures who confidently feed mm -hmm. them the narratives they enjoy, which are riddled with distortion and fabrication almost without exception. These people find comfort in the strength and confidence such figures convey in an appeal to shared beliefs. Well, that exactly. No, th he's right about that. And that's what I was saying before, is that people are more than willing to give their critical thought away to somebody else. Because they don't want to have to think themselves. They don't want to have to make the decisions themselves. They just say, whatever this person thinks, I'm going to agree with them. I don't think, by the way, I mean, obviously this guy doesn't like Donald Trump. And there are good reasons for that and bad reasons, right? I'm not going to argue about like whether like this is Trump is good. Right? That's not the point. Uh, the point is that there are a lot of people that are like this. It's not just Trump. That's why Trump famously stated that he could shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and he wouldn't lose any voters. He was right, by the way. Convicted of 34 felonies, not a single change. Because their idolization of him is emotional, yep. not logical. In the end, and here... It's, it's, it's because they don't respect the law. They don't care.
it, it's actually like it, it's really not that that complex. It's that a lot of people I think probably who who are like pro Trump know that Trump is an asshole or, or like a bad dude in a lot of ways, but they just don't care because they still think Trump is going to do what they want. That's what it comes down to, right? It's not like they don't know this. They're like, yes, he's a bad guy, but he's more on my side than the other guy. Here comes Dave the Broken Record. Anti-science mm -hmm. mentality and reality denial is the single greatest threat facing mankind. Take a movie like Don't Look Up. Yeah. Though obviously satirical, the manner in which the general public in this modern era would react to any existential threat was depicted magnificently. There is no yeah, issue that this. could be more nonpartisan than a comet coming to kill us all. And yet the comet was hyper politicized. People yep. were brainwashed into believing the comet didn't exist. And a megalomaniacal tech oligarch fucked us all. In my estimation, that is roughly what would happen if there were another far deadlier pandemic or some other such situation. And well, the they probably did that during the Black Plague. Like, I guarantee you there are people that were saying that you could, all you have to do is you have to just keep praying and keep using, you know, keep focusing on religion and it'll be okay. And then there are probably other people that said not to do that. I guarantee you that's what happened because that's the way people are. Like, that's just the way it is. Yeah, that like people are just wired that way. Like, it'll be like that in 150 years. Culprit is not the scientific community. It's the pundits and demagogues who abuse the power of the internet to warp public perception of reality. I agree with them, but not because of the internet. I, I think that it's very short-sighted to blame this on the internet. I think this is something that's been happening ever since the history of history. This has always been happening and it always will happen. Because this is a fundamental like uh, quirk with humanity. There's, yeah, this is a people problem. It's not a demagogue problem. Like, this this happens naturally inside of any group of people. People like Rogan are not the main culprits, but they also are not blameless and deserve their share of criticism for amplifying the chaos for monetary gain. And I, I am very much an advocate. I don't like the argument of don't give people platforms. In general, I don't like that argument. The reason why I don't like that argument is because it is also another core human fundamental that things that get censored are seen to be true. This is like a very popular cultural uh, preference that people have. So I think that the moment that you start censoring people and shutting down what people say, everybody will perceive it to be true or they will perceive it to be in some way or another revealing. And I think that, again, you can use COVID as an example, or you can use criticism of like uh, any sort of like race as an example. It's like, well, why can't we criticize them? There's a quote from Voltaire that a lot of people use uh, to find out who rules over you, find out who you can't criticize. And I think this is something that's very commonly repeated and used a lot. Uh, obviously, the quote is really it, it, it's a logically inconsistent quote because you like, I mean, criticizing kids with cancer probably isn't really well liked, but I don't think kids with cancer run the world. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's not always true, but you can see kind of where people are coming from. Right. It's funny, though. Yeah, exactly. And so what ends up happening is that people see this and. I mean, I'm going to be honest, like for Yeah, no, no, just in general, I think this is what happens. And so as soon as somebody gets censored or they're not able to have a platform, a lot of people think to themselves, oh, I think I know why. I think it's much better to beat bad ideas directly rather than let them fester. It's like letting an infection happen is like the longer that you ignore it, the longer that it takes for uh, for it to get worse. Sadly, other than directly neutralizing sources of disinformation and promoting general science mm -hmm. literacy, I don't have a meaningful solution to this doomsday recipe. I don't know how to fundamentally change human nature. You can't. There's nothing that you can do about this at all. Uh, the only thing that you can do is that you can have a education system that makes it less frequent. And even that is like a drop in the bucket. I don't think you can stop this in any capacity. I disagree with the religious part. Oh, I don't. I think that's like a core fundamental. Be either less corrupt and manipulative yeah. or less blindly credulous. I will admit my youthful optimism has been diminished as I enter middle age, but I'm not giving up just yet.
Well, you will soon. It's okay. Maybe I think he's going to need, maybe he'll need two or three more political uh, election seasons, and then he'll give up. Yeah, no, it, it's fine. It'll take some time. Hey, it'll take some time, but he'll get there. Wouldn't fixing the Supreme Court so crap like Citizens United doesn't happen again? I mean, you can't fix the Supreme Court because the justices are the ones that make the decisions and they're supposed to change. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I know a lot of you guys probably are going to be critical of this video because it was kind of painting it as if this is a, you know, uh, you know, Republicans bad video or Trump bad video. But I really think that a lot of the points that he brought up were really valid. And I agree with a lot of what he said. Uh, I do. And uh, yeah, that's this smart people always give up. Yeah, exactly. It's too biased. No, I understand that people might say that, but I respect people. To, I mean, like, you, you heard. I mean, he says a lot of the same shit that I say, too. Right. I mean, there it is. He's still right about it. He's left-leaning, but not unreasonable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think so. And uh, AJ has been the same thing uh, on his shows. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I'll link it to you guys again. It was a good video. Give it a like. Yeah. Most of the independent ideas. Yeah, see, this is this is actually a really good example. This guy in the chat, in the comment, I, I actually wish this was covered. He responded back to this. He, he agrees with it, too. Yeah. What concerns me is that how the most independent ideas are bundled together. Very often when I have a conversation about climate change, people end up talking about big pharma, vaccines, GMO, transgenders, migrants, and diversity. Yeah, that's what I was saying about NPC programming. People are programmed with like a certain type of mechanics, and that's it. No, this guy is 100% right. And that's what I was saying before about people that have the, uh, what do you call it? People that have like a body of propaganda that they subscribe to. And, like, nobody wants to go outside of that body of propaganda because they're afraid. They're afraid that if they do, they could get in big trouble. Hive mentality? Yeah, exactly. Who is husband doesn't start uh, talking about transgender on every topic? Well, I don't... No, I'm just... They, they read it. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, it, it was in the title. Like, I, <laughs> am I really talking about it a lot? I don't think I am. Uh, but, yeah, anyway. Because you believe one conspiracy, you tend to follow suit with most conspiracies. I have a lot of enlightened, fedora, euphoric, atheist opinions. Like, for example, I think that people that are heavily religious are also more likely to believe conspiracies because of their uh, ability to believe bullshit with no evidence. And I have a lot of these. I do. Absolutely, I do. And I can keep going for a long time. But yes, uh, they're also not that smart. I think so. I agree. And uh, does Republicans support woke culture? Well, I don't know. It depends on what you mean by that. People don't want the truth. What they want is an idea that fits into their reality. Brondo is not what plants crave. I had no idea that Stalin actually tried to do that. That was nuts. And uh, social, enable social media enabled so many people to propagate false information more rapidly than before. I really disagree with this person's opinion. But, oh, I, I disagree with the outcome of the opinion. I think the opinion is accurate, but I think that the outcome of what he's saying is un untrue. Uh, social media has also allowed a unparalleled level of accountability. So, for example, a lot of the actual, and this is another problem, uh, is that people believe police brutality is a race issue. Police brutality is not a race issue. It is more of an issue for certain races, but it is an issue for everybody. So now that we have, obviously, like body cams and everybody's carrying a phone around, everybody's carrying a phone, and you can record that, you have genuine accountability for police officers that abuse their authority. And that would not have happened without social media. So yeah, no, we can all talk about how bad social media is, but there are a lot of revolutions and things that you hear about. And like, you know, for example, the Egypt stuff, uh, the things in South America, all of those different types of uh, like revolutions, a lot of them are held together on social media. We're on different places like that. Such a fence sitter take. Can you explain what you mean by that? Can, can you explain what you, what it, what about this is a fence sitter take? Just said that to ruffle your feathers, man. Have a good one. Uh, nope, too many times. You said it twice. If it was only once, I wouldn't have banned you, but it's been too many times. People call you a fence sitter because you make the points they agree with and then points that they don't. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? I actually think it's really just that simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's what it is.